to number five. To play with your spouse is to avoid becoming a prey in marriage. To play with your spouse is to avoid becoming a prey in marriage. Genesis 26 verse 8, the Bible says, When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebekah. Now, in this city, Isaac had lied that his wife, Rebekah, was his sister because he was afraid that the king, Abimelech, was going to take, was going to kill him and, and then take his wife from him. So everybody in this city had believed that Rebekah was Isaac's uh, sister. Until this day when Abimelech looked through the window and saw Isaac playing with his wife. He saw Isaac caressing his wife. And Abimelech said, hey, young man, you have deceived us. Surely Rebekah is your wife. Listen, I found out that many people don't know how to play with their spouses. If you don't know how to play with your spouse, you will lose your spouse. Isaac would have lost Rebekah to Abimelech or to any other man in that city, if not because he knew how to play with his wife. So is either you play with your wife or you become a prey yourself. It's been said, I, 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 hear, I hear some funny things on social media that African, African men are not romantic. African men don't know how to play with their wives. Don't know how fruit that is, but I know that a lot of people are carrying, you know, Africans carry a lot of burdens on their heads, a lot of responsibilities. The man is hustling and jostling to make ends meet. So there is no space in his heart for play. But my friend, Marriage is meant for enjoyment. It's meant for pleasure. It's not meant for hardness. It's not meant for, it's not meant to be endured. It's not something that you go through because life is too short to go through this journey called marriage stressful, enduring, with your face screwed up, loosen up, my friend, and learn to play. If you don't play with your spouse, you'll be so surprised how the enemy can take advantage of you. It amazed me that Jacob would go through seven years to marry a woman. After seven years, now he is, on, he is in the house with the same woman that he had labored for seven years to marry. And through the night, he could not discover that this is not the wife. Why? Because he, yeah, he could not look at her. There was no eye-to-eye -eye connection. There was no contact. He, he, they, they, sleep, they slept through the night and not knowing that this was not his wife. My friend, if you don't know how to play with your spouse, you become a prey. Number six. Beware how you use your emotional powers. Beware how you use your emotional powers. Jo the book of Judges chapter 14 from verse 16. The Bible says, Then Samson's wife threw herself on him, sobbing. You hate me. You don't really love me. You're, you've given my people a redo, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even explained it to my father or mother, he replied. So why should I explain it to you? She cried the whole seven days of the feast. So on the seventh day, he finally told her because she continued to press him. She in turn explained the radio to her people. Before sunset, on the seventh day, the men of the town said to him, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Samson said to them, 
if you had not plowed with my afar, you would not have solved my redo. Hello. If you don't know how to play, I mean to use your emotional power, you will use it against another. Okay? Now, Samson was going to marry. And on his way, he branched, uh, on his way, the, the Bible said that a lion arose to attack him. And he grabbed the lion and killed the lion, tore it, and dropped, and dropped the body there and went. By the time he returned, the lion, the dead lion had produced honey. The carcass of the lion had produced honey. So he took of the honey and went on eating. Now when he got to where he was going to engage his wife, he threw this riddle to them. And the whole people, and the whole people couldn't answer the riddle. These people went to the wife and said, hey, have you brought this man to, to take advantage of us? Tell us. And the young lady said, well, I don't know what the read meant. And they said, go, you must go find out. We cannot be his slave. And the Bible says, Samson's wife threw herself on him sobbing. That's emotional power. He began to, it was, it's called emotional blackmail. And begin, you hate me. You don't really love me. You give me my people a redo. And now you have not explained it to me. So she used her emotion to blackmail Samson day after day. Until he, she wearied Samson and Samson revealed this redo to her. There are ladies who think that the best way they, to get something from their spouse is to use emotional blackmail. Some people is maybe deny sex in order to get what they want or use sex to get what they want or use whatever it is, whatever they feel that the man will be attracted by, they use it to get what they want. See, beware how you use your emotional powers. You have so much power emotionally that you can use, but if you use it negatively, you will ruin yourself and ruin your marriage. Judges chapter 16, I want you to listen to this. Sometime later, Samson fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. The rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. This is somebody Samson wants to marry. And the enemy have occupied her to use her to get to know the secret of his strength so that they could destroy him. So Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become as weak as any man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been dried and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bow strings as easily as a piece of strings snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. Emotional blackmail. He said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I will become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then with, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. 
but he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were trades. Then Delilah, Delilah then said to Samson, all this time you have lied to me. All this time you have been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, if you weave the seven braids of my head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with a pin, I will become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into the fabric, and tightened it with a pin. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and pulled up the pin and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, how can you say I love you? <laughs> when you won't confide in me, emotional blackmail. This is the third time you have made a fool of me and haven't told me the secret of your great strength. With such nagging, I want you to listen to this. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick of death. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day until Samson was sick of death of, of it. He was tired of it. He, she wearied him until, she, until he gave in. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazareth dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. This time, Samson was not speaking from his heart. He was speaking out of depression. He was speaking out of stress. He is being stressed to death. He's been he's been prodded to death. He was tired of this whole thing. He want he you know you know how you trouble a man, and he's at this point he was willing to die. He knew that revealing this thing was was he was revealing his life. He was he was going to be killed for it. He was going to go for it. He has seen how men were hidden in the room to capture him over and over. And he, did, he knew he didn't want to do this, but love has so much power. Elijah saw that he had told her everything. She sent word to the rulers of the Philistines. Come back once more. He has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with a silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off the seven braids of his head and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He awoke from his sleep and thought I would go out as before and shake myself free, but he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged out his eyes, and took him down to Gaza. Binding him with bronze shackles, they set him to grinding grain in the prison. Can you imagine the kind of power, emotional power that the women possess? But some of them use it negatively against themselves. Because using it negatively against your spouse is using it against yourself. Remember, you are already one. Now, she, so can you imagine this thing is playing out in our generation? How people give up their own spouse to the enemy because of what to gain. What is seven, seven shekels of silver that you now betray your own husband? People have betrayed their husband because of money. People have betrayed their husband because of sex. People have betrayed their husband because of, because of things of this world, material things, right? I want you to take note of this. True love makes one vulnerable. True love makes one vulnerable. If you truly love someone, you're going to be vulnerable. 
And many people know this and they take advantage of someone that truly loves them because they know that the person is vulnerable. Do not take advantage of love. Do not betray love. Do not take advantage of someone because the person loves you and now the person is vulnerable. That's wickedness. If you want to enjoy marital bliss, do not take advantage of true love. Okay? Number two, do not betray true love. Do not betray true love. When you see true love, you are going to recognize it, but don't betray it. We have seen people betray true love over and over. I heard a story of someone who is so good, you know, their marriage was flourishing and blossoming, and this guy has a friend, a good friend. And by the time he traveled and trusted his wife to, in the care of his good friend, but before he could come back, his, wife, his friend had taken over the wife and plotted and they, for the wife to kill her husband so that they could marry. What a betrayer. What a heart of wickedness in our generation. And so many of such kind of stories. Number three, friends, emotional blackmail is a deadly whip on a marriage. Never you use it. Whatever it is that you need from your spouse, discuss it, communicate it. If it cannot be understood at that level, don't go and use emotional blackmail because it is deadly. And number four, learn to keep secrets. Never use revealed secrets against your spouse. This is what Delilah did. She used revealed secrets against her, her husband. Never you use Reveal secrets against your spouse, no matter how. The person revealed it to you because he's trusting you. Don't betray that trust. Trust, once betrayed, is difficult to gather. It's difficult to mend. It's difficult to repair. Never you betray trust, right? Whatever secret that has been revealed to you is because this person has trusted you. That's why he has revealed this secret to you. Don't use it against, maybe in the days where, where the chips are down, you now begin to use the revealed secrets against your spouse. Don't do that. If you want to enjoy your marriage, if you want to build a lasting relationship, don't do that. Thank you so much. I believe that you have been blessed. And if you have, please share these videos. If you have questions, if you have comments, please share with us on the comment section. I will get back to you. And remember to share this video to your family, friends, buddies, and let everyone get connected. If you have not subscribed, please do subscribe.